In our previous recording, we added a menu and the foundation of an add a new plant page. So in this video, we're going to expand this add a new plant page. We're going to have it populate a plant TTO, and we're going to send that all the way down to a DAO stub. So first of all, we want to go to our page, which is called addplant.xhtml, and we simply need to add some components. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, clean things up a little bit. We don't need this out, don't need this output label here anymore, at least. So take that away. Okay. Now I'm going to use some of the prime faces elements to uh, collect information about a plant. So we'll start with input, and we're eventually going to want to use autocomplete because we're going to be collecting a genus and a species and common name. And the genus and the species, a lot of times are going to be ones we already have in the database. But let's keep it simple for now. Let's go ahead and use an input text. Uh, easy is just saying uh, p input text. And then we can use hash syntax to wire that up to a bean. So I go back to my page now. And we also want to remember that we can use the h output label to show some text to the user. Let's see if we can make this a unified tag. Okay, h output label value equals, and we'll say genus. Okay, and then after that we'll say p input text. And we might need to add, looks like I don't, oh no, I do have the p library. Okay, uh, input text value equals, and then we'll say double quote, and then pound symbol, open curly, and then we're going to say plant, whoops, spell that correctly plant.genus, okay, and then curly, and terminate. Okay, that looks good. So we'll duplicate this for species, cultivar, and common name. Okay, so we'll simply change each of these. We'll say cultivar uh, species, okay, and then cultivar, and we'll say common name. And on the right side, we want this to match up with our plant DTO. So let's take a look at that and remember what that looks like. Looks like a genus, species, cultivar, and common. Easy enough. Okay, so genus, and then species, and then cultivar, and finally common. Okay, uh, the action listener search plants execute, we're going to want to make a new managed bean for this. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and save, and let's just take a look and see how our page is coming along. Refresh. Okay, uh, kind of ugly. <laughs> so let's add some breaks here. Uh, we'll just put a BR, a typical HTML BR tag, after each of these lines to uh, put them each on a separate line. We could use a little more CSS trickiness with some margin and things like that, but uh, let's just keep things simple at the minute. So I save, uh, return, and yeah, okay, it uh, looks like we might want to call in some of that CSS trickiness, but we'll hold that for a future video. Okay, and back to our page. Okay, so the what we have plant is our DTO, and it's simply going to carry data. We know that a DTO doesn't have a hard dependency on any particular layer because the DTO is something that transfers data in one object from layer to layer. Now, on the other hand, we need to have a user interface class. In this case, it's uh, searchplants.execute, but we're not searching for plants, we're adding plants. So let's make a new user interface class. In Eclipse, I'm going to control M, which will take me back to navigation. And we see this is our, our view. Well, it's instead of a user interface class, we could call it a view level class. This is the view level class that we already have called search plants, which is meant for, guess what, searching a plant. I'm going to borrow these annotations because I know I'm going to need them. I'm going to go to com.plantplaces UI, choose new, and then choose class. And this one will say add plant, uh, super class Java line object is fine, and finish. Okay, and then I'll paste my attributes, okay, and I'm going to make a method public void execute, okay, and whoa, oh, lowercase e on execute, whoops, okay, 
and save. Now we need access to our plant object and we need ac access to the business logic layer or integration layer, service layer, whatever you wish to call it. Once again, we can borrow some syntax that we used from our search plants manage beam. And you see that it simply uses this at inject, which associates the plant DTO and the plant service DTO, uh, plant service managed uh, service layer bean rather, with our user interface layer manage bean. So I'm going to borrow those annotations. I'm going to come back to add plant, and I'm going to paste. Okay. Uh, in the execute method, then, I just need to marry these two together. And I'm sorry, I need one more step here. I need to create the getter and setter for plant. Yep, that's good. And I need to create the getter and setter for plant service. There we go. That's good. Okay. And now in the execute method, I can simply call plant service dot save. Ooh, do we have a save? Doesn't look like it. So we need to make one. Okay, so hold that thought just a second. I'll save my current class. Uh, do one more thing before I jump into the UI layer. Save my current class. Add a plant.xhtml. Uh, I need to update this action listener on the submit button. And we're going to change that to add plant.execute. Okay, and save. Now, first of all, why? Well, that's telling us what's going to happen when we hit the Submit button. When we hit the Submit button, we don't want to search for a plant. We want to add a new plant. So uh, so by doing the add plant.execute, we're redirecting over to add plant. Now, how did I know to call it add plant? Well, I knew to call it add plant because, remember, we have this named annotation on top of add plant, which is basically wiring that up with our dependency injection framework. And since I haven't specified a name, it's going to use the name of this class, but lowercase the first letter. So anytime we see that in one of our XHTML pages, like so, it's going to come straight to this add plant class here. So we go to add plant. And uh, execute method, okay, at this point, we're ready to take a look at our plant service, which is our uh, business logic bean or uh, integration service layer bean, whatever you wish to call it. You see we have a filter plants, but we don't have a save. So let's add a save method. And I'm going to say public void save plant, whoops, let's spell that correctly. Plant, plant. Remember, plant is our DTO. DTO allows us to transfer data in one concise unit across each of our layers, UI, service, and DAO. The advantage is if we change the internals of this type plant, maybe we add a native attribute, maybe we add an edible attribute, something like that, we don't have to change any of these method signatures because the method signatures are dealing with the grander type called plant, not its internal details. So public void save plant and then open curly, close curly. This class already has a dependency injection to our DAO layer. So on our DAO layer, I'm going to say plant DAO and then we're going to say insert. Easy enough. Okay. Now let's see what does this guy complain about. Probably an unhandled exception. Now I have to ask myself, and this is important. A lot of times you're gonna you're gonna come to a prompt like this where you get a red line, and it says unhandled exception type exception. Don't just blindly surround with try catch and leave it empty. That's the worst thing that you can do. If I do this, that's adding no value whatsoever. Remember that for code reviews. First of all, make sure that your program is not doing this before it goes to code review. Secondly, if your program is getting, if you're code reviewing somebody else's, look for these because exceptions, believe it or not, are our friends. They help us build quality programs. They make us think, what are we going to do if something goes wrong? And in this case, with a catch block, that simply is printing the stack trace, it's not providing us with any value. Uh, it's not trying to fix the situation. So the question we need to ask when we get one of these red lines is, if something goes wrong and an exception is thrown, at the layer where I currently am, which is the service layer, business logic layer, integration layer, can I fix the situation? 
If so, surround with a try catch block and in the catch part, fix the situation. If I cannot fix the situation, then throw the exception up one layer to the next layer up and see if it can fix the situation. By the time you get to the UI layer, you're at the very top layer. And if you cannot fix the situation, maybe you want to send a friendly message to the user that says, uh, uh, you know, unable to save at this time or something like that, uh, hopefully with some suggestion on how to fix the situation. The worst thing you can do is hide an exception with essentially an empty catch block or a catch block that is simply logging uh, an error without fixing it. Sometimes you do need those, and if you do, make sure you comment well on why you chose that path and why you chose uh, empty catch block or log message only is important. If not, trust me, you will spend most of your life chasing down mysterious uh, crashes to your program that leave no information for you to follow, and those are the worst kind of things to chase down. In this case, there's nothing I can do to fix this error, so I'm going to control one, and I'm going to say add throws declaration, and that means throw the exception back up to the higher level. Okay, uh, that's good, and I save. Now you might say, wait, 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 okay, uh, you told us we should always use interfaces, and here I'm adding the save method to the implementation class itself without adding it to the interface. That's true, and that's okay, because it, you can start with the implementation and add it to the interface later. Eclipse makes that very easy, and let me show you how. First of all, let's look at the interface and confirm that this method does not exist. Method does not exist, only filter plants does. I go back now, and now let's add the method. But we don't have to do copy-paste magic. Let's allow Eclipse to do the heavy lifting for us. I put my cursor on save, I hold control and press 1, and now take a look at this last option on the context menu that pops up. Create save in supertype iPlant service. And that's exactly what we want. So I click and take a look. It has created, created this method in the interface. Now also remember, we want to give everything uh, very good Java documentation. Java doc is what goes above a class or an interface or above a method. One value when using interfaces is that that's a great place to put the Java doc. If we're good enough with the Java doc here, we don't necessarily need it in the implementation class unless the implementation class that implements this method varies dramatically from the description that we've given this method up in the interface layer. Okay, so slash asterisk asterisk and simply save the plant and perform a validation check. Something like that would be fine. Okay, plant, the plant, we are persisting. No, we're not doing any, we're not speaking specifically about how we're persisting it because the service class is in that business logic layer. Uh, it's, it's, not in the, it, it's not in the data layer, that would be the DAO. So we don't want to talk about primary keys here. Uh, we don't want to talk about uh, date created or date modified or anything that's database specific because maybe we're saving it to a web service or a JSON service or something like that. So throws exception if unable to save. That's good enough. And then save. Okay, back to add plant. Let's take a look and see if we can complete the execute method now. I'm going to say plant service dot save and voila, there's our plant. Okay, uh, now enter. Okay, and now you see, uh, I'll save this. Now you see that we have a red line here, and what I'll do is I'll control one. Uh, and in this case, I can't throw this exception up any higher. So I'll simply say surround with try catch. And this is where I might take some alternate navigational path. So I might say uh, string return, ret run return equals success. Let's assume success unless we know otherwise. And you know what? That should actually return a string, shouldn't it? Okay, string, uh, ooh, that's, a, that's an invalid, which should be return value. String return value equals success. The reason why that was invalid is return is a reserved word that we're not allowed to use. 
uh, as a variable name. Okay. So at the end of this method, I'm going to say return return value. Okay. And again, if everything goes okay, it's going to return success. If something goes wrong, we don't want it to return success. And how are we going to know if something goes wrong? Well, guess what? Uh, we'll know because an exception will be thrown because we've thrown the exception all the way up to this layer. So it's okay to have the ePrint stack trace. Don't get me wrong, that's okay. We probably want to do some real logging. But while we're here, uh, let's add some more value by saying return value equals fail. And now we know that we've taken an alternate path if we're unable to save this plan. So I'll choose save. And now I'm going to snap a breakpoint. I'm going to rebuild this application, and uh, I'm going to snap a couple more breakpoints. I'll rebuild this. Uh, I'll pause and rebuild so that uh, you don't have to just sit and watch it crank for a while. Uh, after that, we're going to step through these breakpoints, and we're going to watch the application run. Just a moment. Now the application is reloaded. Let's take a look at how we can use our form. So for the genus, I can simply say ABs species silicica cultivar faults common name we'll say solution fur and hit submit now we know it's not going to do anything because we have the dao layer stubbed out but we just want to watch the flow through the application to make sure it's correct i hit submit and one moment move the video down a bit you can see that eclipse is now flashing in orange which means the debugger has triggered which is good because we've set that breakpoint on the debugger and uh, now it's up to me to walk through the code as it goes through this process so take a look at where we are add a plant.java that's that managed class that we just made it's starting our return value assuming success unless we catch an exception so in Eclipse, I'm going to choose F6, and now you see it's on the save method. Now again, add a plant. If I mouse over, you're going to see this is in the UI layer. F5 in the Eclipse debugger tells me to step into a method. Let's see, in other words, step into the method, watch it run line by line itself. Let's see what happens when I choose F5 here. I select F5, and now look where I am. I'm in the plant service, and as I mouse over this, you see that's in that service layer, or the business logic layer. Might be a good place to do a bit of validation here. We'll worry about that in a later video. But right now you can see it's calling into this plant DAO. I'm going to F5 into that, and it's going to take us to our stub, the plant DAO stub. There's nothing in the insert method yet. That's fine. Uh, this is just a stub, because you see we've been able to create the UI and start on the business logic layer without a dependency on the DAO layer. So if for any reason that DAO layer is slowed down, maybe the person working on that got behind or anything like that, then the team members working on the UI and the business logic layer can continue. Finally, we see return value. Uh, we see it's going to return success because uh, nothing went wrong so far. Uh, there was very little that could go wrong, but we could at least walk through the layers and, and watch them. If I mouse over plant, uh, we're going to see that it has properly been populated with solution fur, faults, abes, and uh, silicica. So the plant has been correctly populated from our screen. Not bad at all. Let me go ahead and press play. And because I have not uh, I have not set any navigation rules, it's just going to stay on the same page, which is fine, uh, because we'll tackle navigation rules in the next video. So that is how we're going to make an add a plant form. Probably a little more touch up to go, but I think we're off to a good start. Thank you.